Oh, hey, what's up? I got something to show you. So this is a bit of a mess, a cluster f if you will, because it's a Kubernetes cluster. So to begin, I'll start by showing you some photos of me building this contraption. I have to apologize since I didn't film too much of it, but that was probably for the best because I'm a terrible carpenter and it wasn't easy doing woodworking in my studio apartment. I'm pretty sure I got sawdust in my food and in my bed. So what I have here essentially is five motherboards out of old Dell Optiplex computers. Uh, I have a rack with hard drives in it, uh, cooled by this fan. And on the back side, there's power supplies, uh, networking stuff, and a UPS. The design wasn't really that important in hindsight. Um, I had these computers in a other sort of rack before that, but I wanted to downsize and consolidate. Um, ultimately, I just needed a bunch of computers to do a Kubernetes cluster with. I keep saying that word a lot, Kubernetes. Let's briefly talk about what it is and what you can do with it. So with Kubernetes, the basic idea is to enable containerized application management. And to understand that, we first have to talk about the difference between a virtual machine and a container. So with a virtual machine, which uh, has been the industry standard and is still a wonderful thing to do, it's a lot of fun to play around with, um, you are creating an app, but then you're also uh, talking about a, an operating system to run that app on. So you not only have the app sitting in each virtual machine, but the virtual machine itself is running an entire operating system. And this, of course, sits, upon, sits on top of a hypervisor, which manages VM uh, resource allocation and stuff like that. And all of that sits on top of the operating system of the server. So in contrast, a container, you're still making an app and packaging it into an image of sorts, but you are only including the supporting files and runtime necessary for that app. Uh, everything else is borrowed from the host operating system in sort of a read-only uh, format. So what this means is you can have you know, these apps with this uh, supporting files and runtime, and then you can go ahead and have a completely different uh, set of applications with different files and runtimes all sharing the same operating system. Um, VMs will typically take a couple minutes to start up, but containers, since they're sort of measured as, as far as size in the megabytes, they'll take only a few seconds to, to, to spin up. So what Kubernetes enables me to do is use that uh, containerized application architecture and span it across multiple hosts. So what I have here is just a simple diagram from SUSE um, where I have a master node, which contains uh, AP, the API server, the scheduler, uh, the controller manager, a cloud controller manager, if it's a cloud service, um, and e ETCD is a persistent storage. Um, but then the master node will communicate to uh, each separate host that I have set up as a worker node. And then let's say I wanted to uh, run, some, run a web application and have a bunch of different copies of that web, web application spread across the different nodes that I have. So I can deploy however many copies I want and then they will show up as containers running in a pod on the node. So it's abstraction upon abstraction upon abstraction but it allows me to do really cool things and distribute loads across different hosts. Sorry, my friend sent me a meme. Uh, right, Kubernetes. Um, all right, so here's an example. Here is what my architecture might look like. Um, here's me, very poorly drawn stick figure. Here's my master node and the IP that I gave it. Um, and then my four worker nodes, which also have static IPs. So I say, hey, give me 10 Nginx web server instances, please, just as an example. I don't know, Nginx is pretty easy to use. Um, and then my master node says, okay, I found that image. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and deploy that for you, man. And then he says, all right, I've got, I want 10 instances, but I have five nodes. So I'm gonna give 
uh, each node to um, the master node is an instance in and of itself also so it also gives itself two uh, and that's essentially how it works so now let's talk about uh, actually interfacing with and working with the Kubernetes cluster that I have here. So the first thing that I could do is I could uh, SSH into my master node, which I'm gonna do right now. So I'm not very good at speaking and typing, but here we go. And all right. So we are in the node and I can run, I can run cube, uh, cube control commands. So let's just say, for example, cube control, get nodes. And you see here that I have all of my connected nodes that are showing up here. Um, but there's a better way, uh, especially for people who are doing this at home. You can use SUSE Rancher's control plane uh, management tool, which uh, in my case, I have this running on a VM, you know, pun intended, we're using <laughs> containers and I have it running on a VM. But this VM, which sits on my Dell server, is actually running its own Kubernetes, Kubernetes clusters, you can see here, to uh, do, the con do the control software and also run this web server, um, which you can see here. But my cluster is here, I can go into it and I can see that you know, I'm not using anything. You know, I have 20 uh, vCPUs that I can use, uh, as well as 35 gigs of memory and uh, an estimate of how many pods that I can deploy. Um, and I can actually go and do uh, my shell from here. So why don't we do that? Uh, keep control, get all. And it might take a while, but yep, there we go. So. Uh, this is a really nice way of doing it, and it's also really nice that I get to see in a very pretty dashboard what's going on in my cluster. So, as you probably will have noticed, I have nothing running on this cluster. Uh, let's change that. So, I have basically created a configuration file for a very basic Nginx uh, web server deployment. So let's go ahead and look at that, and I'll probably talk a little bit about um, what a deployment configuration file looks like. So I'm gonna go into deployments, and then, actually, you know what, let's do nano. Uh, nano this configuration file. So you can see here, um, this is essentially one way to talk to a Kubernetes deployment and tell, them, uh, tell it what to do. So I have a, de it's a deployment, uh, which means that it's a it's deploying a stateless application um, and I have all these specifications here. I'm saying that uh, I'm labeling it uh, application as Nginx. I'm telling it to do 10 replicas of this application um, and I'm going to uh, specify the container port 80. All this is just metadata stuff that, uh, that, that you need to know. But really what's important here is you see this image flag so what it's actually doing is it's going into Docker Hub and it's finding this image of Nginx and then pulling it from Docker Hub. So I didn't have to do anything except just specify this deployment. So let's get out of here, clear this out. And now I can say the big command, cube control, apply, and then I'm gonna give it the file config.yaml, and here we go. And there we go, the deployment has been created. So now let's go, cube control, describe deployment, uh, engine X deployment, which is what I named it. All right, and you can see here all of this information, 10 replicas desired, three are already available, seven are still uh, uh, turning on. But that's basically it. That's how easy it is to create a deployment on Kubernetes. All right, so I'm going to do one last thing. So I've deployed this uh, Nginx web server. I have 10 replicas um, sitting in my cluster. Uh, spread around, spread, spread around the, the the nodes that I have. But the question is, you know, how do I how do I actually see that web page? 
So what I'm going to do here uh, is probably the simplest way to go about it, but the least secure way. So this isn't something you would use in a production environment, but it's perfect for my purposes right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am in the master node and I am going to say uh, cube control expose deployment. And then I have it set as uh, I named it Nginx deployment. And then I'm going to specify type node port, which basically just means that uh, I can uh, I, I can uh, I can map that port, uh, the port 80 that Nginx is using, to another port, and then I can just um, access it via the internal IP of the node. So I'll show you what that looks like. So type node port, and then I'll name it uh, example node port, some, something simple like that. All right, and then we see that uh, the service has been exposed. So now I'm going to say cube control describe service example node port. So what this is gonna show me here is that uh, the port of the deployment is using 80. Nginx uses 80, which is just your standard HTTP, not secure. Um, and I have it mapped to this port, uh, 30725. So now I'm gonna go up here. I'm going to type 192.168.3, and then I'll just pick whatever. I'll pick 54, which is uh, the worker four. And then I'm going to use port 30, and then what was it? 3725. 725. There we go. We have our welcome to Nginx displayed here. And for the purposes of this video, this is as far as I'm going to go. Um, there are load balancers and stuff like that that you can use. Um, but this is basically all that I want to show here today. So I wanted to mention first that uh, I'm in particular using K3s, which is a sort of minified version of Kubernetes. Um, it is still Kubernetes, but since my nodes don't have all that much processing power or memory, I thought it was the best, uh, best choice to go with for my own at-home Kubernetes deployment. And as far as education on these things, I sort of want to call out a couple of other YouTube channels who have done great work um, on education in this subject. Uh, Tech World with Nana is a wonderful resource, and she has videos on literally everything in technology, uh, including a full, like, four-hour course on Kubernetes for beginners. Um, and then for this particular at-home deployment, um, I have to call it Network Chuck, because he has a video where uh, he, he does a Kubernetes cluster all on Raspberry Pis, and he has, like, eight Raspberry Pis. Of course, you know, I have these Dell Optiplex computers, but it's a whole lot more accessible for the average hobbyist to just go out and get a bunch of Raspberry Pis, or even one. Uh, K3s will run on just one Raspberry Pi. It's incredible. Um, so, really wanted to thank them, and uh, also know that the, the setup that I'm going for is pretty much the same as Network Chuck's setup, although I'm doing it on Dell Optiplexes and not Raspberry Pis. All right, so here's the deal. The last video that I put out um, about the PFSense box that I built uh, recently just kind of got a lot of traction. Uh, so if you were one of those people who gave it traction, just first of all, thank you. Uh, for me, I put that video there because I kind of wanted to just document the process and give it a try. Uh, I was very hesitant to do it at first uh, since Hell, I don't know how to make videos. <laughs> I don't know how to make good videos, but I can sure try. Um, so, you know, if, uh, if you liked that video and you like this one, thank you for your support. I'm gonna try and do more. Uh, I'm a bit of a strange fellow since I come from a background that has, uh, it has music, electronics, of course this stuff, uh, some sales and marketing stuff. I felt weird. Saxophone. Uh, so there's a lot of weird stuff, but my sort of mistake, and it took some really good friends to finally get me to realize this, is that 
you know, I do all this stuff and I take no pictures, I take no videos, I share it with no one. Um, sort of, I think that, well, it's such a unique thing, who's gonna be interested? But clearly, enough people are interested, so it's worthwhile to do this. So, you know, if you stick around, just thank you for your support. Uh, I also want to address a bit of an elephant in the room. So that PF Sense box video uh, was filmed in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. It had an internet connection, but it wasn't very good. Uh, mine's better now. But, uh, you know, different room. This is a different room. I'm now in a new city, uh, new people, new headspace, new mustache. Uh, and a whole lot of support from uh, from the community around me. So uh, I think it's time to finally do more of this stuff, you know? There's a whole lot of weird stuff that I can get into. Like, I mean, hell, look at this desktop bathroom, right? I mean, that's funny. And it's on every single one of my computers in this apartment. It's, I mean, man, I don't know. It, listen, <laughs> sorry, I got carried away. Uh, back to this message. I'm gonna do more videos. I don't know what they'll be about yet, and you don't know, I don't know either. I have some ideas in the pipeline, but you know, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, then stick around because I'm sure as hell doing more of it. Uh, anyways, you know, thank you and good night. <laughs>